everybody. My name is John Filer. I'm the Chief of EMS and Special Operations for the Charles County Department of Emergency Services. And with us today is Dr. Kevin Seaman, the Jurisdictional Medical Director for Charles County, and Andrew Spalding, the Volunteer EMS Chief for Charles County as well. Hello, gentlemen. Thanks for being with us. Morning, Chiefs. Morning, Chief Filer. All right. So today, um, we are here, our intention is to notify the general public that uh, our EMS operational program for Charles County is um, implementing a new policy that a, a new policy and procedure that has been established by the state to help us kind of quell the influx of patients that we have um, showing up at the emergency room and trying to free up some critical, uh, medical resources, both in the field and at the hospital. And this is done through the viral uh, pandemic triage protocol that the state has implemented. Um, 23 out of the 24 jurisdictions across the state have implemented the program, and we are one of them. And the purpose behind this is not to try and get you to not go seek medical attention, but it is to preserve resources and and promote sustainability of our medical system, which is at the front line of the pandemic right now. And I brought two subject matter experts in on this, and that someone is Dr. Kevin Seaman. So, Doc, there's your intro. Well, thank, thank you, Chief. You know, I think uh, just to build on what you said, I think the right size is a good way to describe it. You know, we, you know EMS prides ourselves in getting the right uh, – resource to the right patient at the right time, the right treatment, the right destination. And I think this is just a, a variation on that. So, I mean, first I want to thank uh, all of our public safety, you know, workers, you know, our EMS clinicians, our 911 specialists, our first responders and firefighters, they're all working hard. And as usual, you know, they're running into uh, danger in a sense, running into possible infection while all of us are kind of uh, backing off and staying home. So I want to thank all of them very much. Uh, for all they do, and especially being very brave in, in the face of this, some unknowns here, but I think we're all getting through this together. And I also want to thank our community because I think that you all are really the, the backbone of, uh, you know, controlling this, you know, and I think that uh, one thought that comes to mind is it takes a system, uh, and for us, that's the community, the, the residents, uh, all of public safety, everyone in the uh, the county, including uh, all of our county government, is working so well to, to address this as well. And all of us working together can really beat this. Uh, and maybe, you know, just a big picture sometimes helps. Uh, this COVID is, uh, it's a virus. Uh, you know, we've had COVID viruses before that cause colds, but this one is a little novel, a little different. And what that means is it's more infective. So a lot of people can get, get infected with it. But the good news there is 80% of us are going to have a mild symptoms like a mild cold or mild flu, get better, not know any difference, you know, not really uh, have any real problems from it. But then for those other, you know, 15, 20% of people, they can have very, very much more severe illness. And so the two things about this is that more people are infected. And if we that are going to have a good outcome don't control, you know, our exposures and things, it uh, can really put people that are more at risk for uh, more severe illness. You know, and I think that's important for us to keep in mind. And uh, and then I think if you have severe symptoms, there's another uh, part of that message that we'll talk about here in a little bit, I believe. But I think that, you know, that's the big picture that um, we're implementing this program that, as the Chief Eiler has said, has been uh, put forth and, and uh, recommended by the state to try to give the right uh, resources to the patients based on their need. And we have a protocol that will do that, that will help predict if you're low risk, that uh, at the time of our evaluation, then it's safe for you to stay home, you know, shelter at home, control your symptoms, do the things that have been uh, messaged before, wash your hands, cover your cough, stay six feet away, socially distance. And I think with that, there's a little bit of evidence now that uh, hospital admissions and uh, severe cases are going down uh, in other parts of the nation. Uh, it doesn't mean we should give up our 
our measures, but I think we should just do them more intensely to try and get through this and flatten this curve uh, completely. So, Andrew, Chief Spalding, from a from the first responders perspective, what do you think is the benefits of us implementing the viral pandemic triage protocol? Sure, Chief. Well, like Dr. Seaman said, I think the important thing for everybody to know is that what we are doing is working. Uh, we're seeing the other numbers, as he said, drop in other parts of the country. And we have to remember that we can't give up. While I know it's frustrating at times and everybody is uh, reaching their limit of being home and everything, they have to realize it's of the utmost importance to be able to help flatten the curve, as he said. Um, you know, only going out when you absolutely need to versus going out for joy rides or anything. Um, stopping at the firehouses or going directly to firehouses, for example, when you're having symptoms versus uh, going through the proper channels of dialing 911 so that the 911 specialist can properly code your call and figure out exactly what help you need uh, for for the public's best interest. So it's important to know that uh, we definitely understand as well, this is a totally different concept as far as what we consider business as usual. Uh, we've been doing it certain ways for years, and that's all you've been trained is, you know, you try to convince everybody to go to the hospital. So while we understand it's definitely, like I said, different concept for us, uh, we're really doing what's in the best interest of the public based on their symptoms if they're truly sick. And by that, I mean, you know, severe trouble breathing or chest pains or altered mental status, anything like that. Know that we will do what's in your best interest to get you to the proper healthcare facility. Um, as the doctor said, versus more mild symptoms where it's a call for something like that, where you're putting, really, you're getting put in further danger as the public, us as responders, um, others around us, where it might be best for you to just stay home and kind of ride the wave, so to speak, and do what you can to help, uh, help take care of it. Um, the other thing is it helps us to save our resources, which we're all working very hard to maintain as far as our personal protective equipment, our gowns, our masks, and all that stuff. So by instilling this protocol, we're able to, you know, send one person in, kind of evaluate the situation, see what's going on with the patient to figure out what the best course of action is. And when they meet that certain criteria, again, it's in their best interest to stay home. We've now used one set of PPE versus many sets of personal protective equipment. So I think the main thing is just to remember, help us to protect you as the public, help us to protect us as the responders, and help by protecting everybody else. I just, you know, if you can stay home, do it. And that's where this protocol comes into play. So uh, I think it's going to be a very useful tool for Charles County and all of its responders and the public and uh, looking forward to get going with it. All right. Um, so let me just break this down real quick for the general public and give you a little quick scenario so we're very clear. Um, not all calls, just those involving this pandemic. You will call, the general public will call 911. They will go through a set of triage questions by the 911 communication center. A resource will be dispatched. Paramedics and EMTs will show up to the home and based on if it's related to the COVID-19 pandemic, your symptomology is related to that, they will go through a checklist. And in the checklist that was designed by the state, they will either recommend that, hey, we need to take you to the hospital, or it is recommended that you shelter at home, self-treat, and call us back if your symptoms get worse. And we will leave you with literature of resources that um, help instruct you to self-treat or if symptoms get worse uh, to notify the health department and if you need to you can call us back and we offer this in Spanish and English and then our provider our EMS clinicians will leave and hopefully you follow up with the protocol right uh, protocol treatments that they recommend and you will be left at home and that's pretty much what the protocol is for us during this pandemic that we are facing um, outside of that, if you actually have serious symptoms or things that are not related to COVID-19, 
absolutely we're going to take you. Like if you're having a heart attack, we're not going to say no. We're going to take you to the hospital, the most appropriate treatment center. Um, other relation, other uh, illnesses like that. Um, obviously, we wouldn't do it for broken arms and stuff like that. This is just for symptoms related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Did I get that right, Doc Seaman? Well, I think, uh, Chief, you did a great job. I, I would make the point, just that it's a little bit of a clarification, but so the symptoms that you might have, like runny nose or sore throat or cough or uh, fever, things like that, it, it could be COVID, it could be a virus, it could be influenza. We don't know. And uh, the good news is it doesn't really matter. So I think for all of those, if you uh, if you meet the criteria for uh, low risk uh, and we give you instructions and have you, uh, and actually, I think the, the other important point is it's your choice. You know, if we, if the protocol recommends you stay home and you're willing to do that, then we would uh, um, do an elbow bump and say thank you and good job for the community and, uh, you know, and we're here if you need us. The symptoms that might get you, you know, it, it, that's one point in time. And so you might need uh you might, your symptoms might change and you might get shorter breath when you walk or you might have a high fever, you might have chest pain. And, and I agree with uh, Chief Eiler that, uh, you know, we're not saying no to other emergencies, which we know are occurring. So, you know, if you have um, uh, chest pain that worries you, you should call us and we'll respond. We'll assess it and take care of you. But for those people that uh, have more severe symptoms, again, we'll you know, we'll respond, we'll assess you. And if you meet these criteria that say you should uh, be transferred to the hospital, we'll offer that. Uh, and some of those, uh, other than your symptoms, the people that get more trouble are people with, uh, you know, chronic illnesses, lung disease, heart disease, organ failure symptoms like kidney failure, things like that. And if you have those things and your symptoms get more severe, then clearly we're going to... Um, assess you and I think you would fall into that group that then we would recommend you be transported to the hospital. So this, it goes both ways. It's trying to right size this to say, you know, if you need more evaluation than we can give or treatment than we can give or assessment, then we'll transport you to the emergency department. They'll do uh, uh, the test they believe would help clarify kind of where you are with this and what resources you need. Uh, but if you don't meet those criteria, at least at that point in time, it's pretty reassuring, and uh, you should have some confidence. You can shelter at home. Uh, we need you to be a part, uh, be a partner with us to, if your symptoms change, then to be aware of those and to uh, not make this one point in time, one decision, but rather to say, "Hey, things have changed now, and uh, I need to call nine one one or get some help to figure out is this changed enough for me to change what I'm doing." Kind of thing. So, thank you, Doc, and. Uh- Chief Spalding, any other words of wisdom for us? No, I just I appreciate the public's understanding. Um, and like I said, helping us to protect ourselves, helping us to protect them and everybody else involved. And I uh, look forward to getting this implemented and just know that your best interest will be at the top of our list throughout this entire process. Yeah, I would echo that. Um, we're here for you guys. We're here for everybody. Uh, stay safe out there. Wash your hands. Social distancing. Stay back, Jack. Six feet. Okay. Have a good day. Everybody take care and stay safe, okay?